Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Impact Series hosted by 4.0. My name is Michael Palmer. I'm one of the uh, co-founders and lead recruiters here at 4.0. And today, absolutely delighted to be joined by Sean Kelly from Ampum. Um, so, Sean, uh, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, so, Sean, let, let's kick things off. For th those people that aren't familiar with you, those people who are familiar with, with Amperon, you know, tell us a little bit about you know, your journey. Tell us a little bit about the company, uh, specifically in regards to the climate issues that Amperon are helping to solve. And, of course, your specific, unique approach to those problems. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so Amperon is the forecasting company for the energy transition. We started the company in January of 2018, and with that, we started focusing on electricity demand forecasting. So we would tell you on a 15-day basis what was happening every single hour, updated every single hour because you get new weather. Um, and the reason it goes out for 360 hours is because that's how long the Euro uh, and the GFS models run uh, is 360 hours. And then it updates every hour because you have like the HRRR, which runs every hour for 36 hours, and the NAM, which runs every three for 72. As everyone knows, weather's always changing. Uh, yeah. And so that's, that's something that that's why we continue to update our models. And we don't give a probabilistic. Our goal is to be correct. And so we give you the actual answers as opposed to a, a realm of possibilities. So that's where we started the company. Um, we started in the United States um, serving retail energy providers, those in the deregulated uh, countries, which I know a lot of Europe is deregulated, that you can actually choose who your electricity provider is. And then we also sold that to traders. Um, so my background is as an electricity trader. So uh, also a little um, European flair there as I worked for Electricité de France uh, and also uh, help set up Eon's uh, trade floor when they entered the North American market in Chicago. Um, so worked for a big French utility and big German utility. So uh, learned plenty about that. Uh, the, the biggest mark I have on the resume is working at Lehman Brothers when everything fell apart. Uh, so <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's the entertaining one. But it's been 11 years uh, from 05 to 16 running power plants, trading physical and financial electricity all over the eastern half of the United States, uh, some Texas, a little bit of Canada, and it was a really, really good way to understand uh, power markets. And so this energy transition, it's, it's not new to me. I've been watching this transition for over 18 years. Uh, and so I, I often look back and my first job was a company called Tenasca, and we scheduled a lot of the grid at that point they did energy management agreements and i remember in texas there was 3200 megawatts of wind now there's 38000 and so you see that transition um i helped with the integration of uh two nuclear plants the edf ball when they entered the us market obviously nuclear was really hot a little while ago uh in europe and now the push is more toward full renewables um, but it's been a really interesting, uh, interesting career. And so with that, um, I met my co-founder, Abe Stanway, and the energy industry has not, not ever been called uh, too uh, tech heavy, I guess we can say. And yeah. so I was living in New York and you see all these just pure tech companies. I mean, you got like the big five here in the U.S. I mean, they're pretty much world, world dominated. Uh, but with that, you see that type of tech talent. And I didn't see that in the energy, energy industry. Um, okay. I knew we were, in about, we were about to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, and that's why Amperon was started is we knew the energy transition was great. It's helping us get closer to that net zero that we're looking at. But it causes like if it's not handled correctly, if we're not prepared for it, rooftop solar is great. But we help run the grid in Australia and that thing actually dips negative on the duck curve in the middle of the day. It's, it's hard to deal with. Uh, wind is great, but when it doesn't blow, you've got to figure out what, what like base load generation that displaced and make sure that you can find a way to 
goes to cure power to keep the lights on. So um, yeah. electric vehicles, I mean, really exciting. I, I, that's probably going to be my next car as an EV, hopefully later this year. And those things are fast and a lot of fun, a lot of trunk space too, which when you have a two-year-old yeah. is super helpful. Um, but if everyone plugs in on the same street at the same time, we're done. Um, so that's really why Amperon wants to help everyone forecast. So we started with that demand, that electricity demand. We realized that wasn't the full equation. Uh, and so earlier this year, we launched net demand. Um, so net demand, wind and solar. Uh, so we now do not on a site level, but on a like on a market level, like a DSO level, we would say this is what the wind looks like in Germany. This is what the wind looks like in France. So that those people who are active in the market, a lot of battery operators, right? Um, and so they could uh, understand what the market's going to look like. So that was the next iteration. Um, I was very nervous about how accurate we would be. Um, the market we started in is Texas. I live in Houston, Texas. Um, and it's a, a interesting market. Everyone probably heard about February 2021 globally uh, when everything froze and we had blackouts and it was a total and utter disaster. You, it's always better to be famous than infamous. Um, ERCOT definitely won the infamous award. And so with that, um, I was curious to see how we would be on that. So we're about 25% better than ERCOT. ERCOT is actually better than all the other vendors um, that have been trialed uh, in terms of accuracy for wind and solar. So I was really proud of that. Um, and then after that, we've gone and we're putting out price forecasting. Price forecasting, uh, to those of us who want to totally nerd out about this, is just what we call a stack model. And you basically say, OK, we've got like any coal, nuclear, natural gas, renewables, batteries, et cetera. And you put those on top of each other. You figure out what each one costs to run. And then that's theoretically where your price is going to look at on a day ahead basis. So we're building right. out the price wow. model. Um, and then next is scope two. Um, scope two, uh, I hired really talented um, chief revenue officer, uh, Alex Robart, and he was before this, the chief commercial officer of sustainability at Microsoft. And so he came in and was like, it was a good hire. Uh, <laughs> and Sounds he, like a good hire. Yeah, he started in January. Um, he has made my life significantly easier. And so he came in and said, guys, like scope two is where everyone's talking about, where everyone's headed, the big tech companies, the big oil and gas companies, Europe. This is what everyone's paying attention to. You already have the data. The hard part of the data is figuring out it's electricity demand times like carbon insights. So we released um, in June uh, a partnership with a company called Watt Time. It's a nonprofit really impressive guys I met a couple of years ago. And so we're taking the watt time data, layering that on top of um, the hourly data that we have, because not only do we have a 15 day forecast, we have a five year forecast as well going out hourly. So okay. this, is, this is for anyone who has meters, who is a load serving entity. Uh, and so we tell them what the next five years looks like so that they can hedge. And so we'll say, oh, wow, you've got really heavy residential solar penetration. Your four, your four to five years looks a little different than, than some of your friends. Um, and so that's what we're using as well. So that one we give probabilistic. We give like, we run a thousand Markov models from a P99, a P15, a P1. So yeah, those are the five products that we've launched uh, in the U.S. Uh, launched or are launching by the end of the year in the U.S., uh, Canada, and Australia. And then the really fun uh thing is and part of the reason like you and i started talking and that i'm really excited about being on this um is we're launching europe in q4 and so Amazing. that's uh gonna be really exciting and and um and we'll just like for, for you know i'm certainly not um you know an expert in yes yeah, certainly haven't been an energy trader like yourself and for yeah perhaps some of the lay people are uh, out there watching this short I mean, what, what what's the kind of typical user case then for for amperon's technology for your software which yeah who, who's using it which sort of companies which yeah which yeah, what, how 
you know, how is it being utilized, you know, on a daily basis by, you know, by one of your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So you would have you would have someone who says, I have I have a million meters and I've got a I already sold these to like Michael and 999,000 other people. Uh, and I have to go procure that energy. Uh, I don't want to just roll the dice and every five minutes when that print comes up, uh, find out what it is. If I sell you power at 20 cents, I should be able to go buy it for 19 cents. And yeah. so per kilowatt hour and so that's what you're going and doing is you're going and making sure that you have bought that power um ahead of time and so they're looking at our forecast and they're saying um like it's 10 o'clock here in texas a.m uh and 10 a.m is when all of the bids are due to the market and so there you go in and say i would like to buy this much tomorrow well we're telling you every single hour how much you need to ask the market for and you get to deem what price you can say, I'll, I'll buy a hundred dollar power, but I'm not buying $200 power. Um, and so you get to look at it from that standpoint okay. and then you you're hedging, right? So you're hedging just like anything and you're, you're buying something that you think is going to go up. And if you're, if you think it's going to go down, you're selling it. Um, so, I mean, it's the same trading as, as trading stocks. So you're doing that, but you also have a reliability component, right? These, these people are also running power lines. Some of our clients are owning power lines, they're owning generation, and they need to keep the lights on, right? Um, and so that's the real big focus. So we can tell them, if the market's telling them that the load is going to be X, and we say it's going to be 5,000 megawatts higher than X, then you can guess there's going to be a price scarcity event. Um, so that, that's where you, that's where you really look at it. If you can call these heat waves ahead of time, we have a PhD meteorologist on staff. That's where there's a lot of money to be had. Um, I was in last summer, I was in uh, London during that crazy heat wave that like shut down Heathrow. We left the day before. I remember, we're yeah. I remember we were talking around that as well. Um, yeah. And so it was like, I mean, if you had been able to see that, then you would have been able to go and buy the market ahead of time to make sure that the homes that you were responsible for and the businesses you were responsible for as a retail energy provider were taken care of. And National Grid, I assume, was probably wrong on their forecast. And so you would go in and say, hey, I think it's going to be a lot higher than what National Grid says. Let's like let's make sure we're, we're all taken care of. Um, so yeah, that's what our forecast is used for. Um, like on a on a day to day basis, it's the person, it's the trader, it's the the risk manager uh, who's the operator. Okay, interesting, cool. And you said, I mean, you, you mentioned as well there, Sean, that the you know a really exciting step on the journey, the you know, the end of this year is to launch in Europe. So can you talk to a little, uh, so a bit, yeah, a bit more about what what does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that actually mean for for Ampro? Yeah, so. Um, I mean, I knew a little bit, I knew enough to be dangerous about Europe just from my experiences at EDF and Eon. Um, but I went to a really, really entertaining conference. I will say Europeans have much better conferences than Americans do. Uh, <laughs> and so I went to Essen, Germany. Uh, I had never, even though despite working at Eon, I'd never been to Dusseldorf. Uh, and so flew into there um, after some meetings in Paris and then went to Essen. And this, there was an entire town, an entire convention center. It was all just literally focused on electricity. It was unbelievable. Every person there was a theoretical prospect for us. Um, and so because of that, we've got a, we now have a list of 20 companies, about 20 companies uh, who are gonna be in our beta group that we, when we do the product launch, we're aiming for a November 1st product launch. Um, and then we are going to, uh, then have a, like the actual product go live on January 1st. But this is how we built it. We've, we've listened to people and said, how can we help you? Um, when I was in London for, I was in London for 10 days and, and then Paris for 10 days last summer. Um, and I had a ton of meetings. Everyone was super eager to talk to, uh, to talk to me and just like share their experiences, both like London and Paris are great cities, had a blast. Uh, and when I was there, they said like, don't show up without a renewables forecast. Renewables is so important. And at that time we didn't have a renewables forecast in the U S. And so this really helped put it on the roadmap. 
And so I, they've got to say, this is what, this is what the UK is going to be doing. Um, this is what Germany is going to be doing. And so that's where, that's the product that's going to come out. Um, we do know we're very cognizant of there are going to be like on the business to consumer side, there are going to be some GDPR issues that we need to be very cognizant of um, with it going to the actual meters. So right now our focus is going to be like traders, battery operators, uh, power producers. That's who we're really going to be selling to. Um, but yeah, excited, excited for that launch. Uh, and the European grid is really easy to set up because everything y'all do such a great job of centralizing your data. Um, so because of that, the, the TSO is operates on its own and then the UK grid operates on its own. And that's one source of data. And we can all, uh, we can go in there and basically get all the data that we need because um, these models are built off only public data. So we're, we're really excited about it. We're going to start scraping the data here in the next few weeks. Amazing. Okay, sure. Look, um, well, look, it's been, I think we're kind of running towards the end of our, our time, a lot of time here. Um, so it's been, look, it's been fantastic to, you know, chat to you again. Fantastic to get to, you know, more about the business. Obviously, exciting times with the launch in Europe. Um, so we'll be sure to share your profile, uh, make sure people can find you, follow the company um, as well. And, and yeah, look you know, look forward to kind of the news coming out for Amperon and, and, and the impact that you can continue to make in the market. Thank you. So, Sean, I will speak to you soon. Nice to chat to you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.